are you going to give me the product or are you just going to keep laughing at it? You have to read the labels on it. It's a top grade smart cheese and cream heating knife for like butter. Like when it's, when it's rock hard and you, you can't scrape it because you didn't take it out of the fridge in time. Apparently it has funny warnings on it because he's just been sitting there for five minutes laughing as I'm standing here waiting to start. DC waterproof silicone blug? <laughs> Why does it say plug? There's like typos and stuff all over the packaging. Like plug, leads to the name plug? Wazy, cooperate, more safe? <gasps> oh no. Easy to clean, more health. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting the more health from? What? <laughs> okay, 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 let's open this. I'm like, when we saw this rock online, we're definitely really excited. How do you want it? There's like no good way, wait, wait. Got it. Reading the packaging just makes me really concerned. You never know with these gadgets, like where they're really coming from. Okay, so it's got a plug. Oh, here. Oh, oh, let me get my uh, my new camera. Yeah, he let spent me. hundreds of dollars on what a heat thing? What's it called? It's a thermal imaging camera. And he's just like, it's we can so use them cool. for videos. So, so many cool. videos. I was like, what videos? And of course. Yeah, this will be so perfect. We can see if it actually heats up. It looks like it's getting warm. It's getting warmer. It's definitely not like too hot to touch, but there's gonna be that point that I go to touch it and then it's gonna burn me. Like there's just not very much information. They've got this whole blank surface here that it could be like instructions or something and there's there's nothing. Like how long it takes to heat up, it holds X amount of charge for X amount of time. Like just the basic information that you would expect when you buy something. Wait, how cold is the butter? About 15 to 16 degrees Celsius. This is the most ridiculous thing you've I ever bought. This. It's pretty hot now. I feel like we've been waiting like five minutes okay. for it to heat up. Oh, it's like a bright hot spot on it. My question is when we start to take the butter off, is it just gonna like slide around and make like a drippy mess or is it actually just gonna slide it off and you know? But maybe we, we let's try the, the regular butter knife first. You can still spread it. Like this might be like a problem that we like didn't really need solved. You know, like it's not really a problem. <laughs> Let me just. <laughs> so much better. Oh wait, wait. Maybe this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to cut a chunk with that knife, and put it on the bread, and then use that one to melt it on the bread. I bet you that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's the that's the stuff. Does it melt? Does it heat? Yes. Is it useful? Well, it took like five, 10 minutes to heat up. How much is it? It's $35 Canadian. $35? Like if you're gonna get it for like, not even $10 or $15 with all the typos that are on the packaging, but $35 when it like barely worked, like you could kind of get it, but I feel like it's no better than like what, what a butter knife would be. I'd say it's a dud and let's move on to the next one. Last one. I do not eat hard boiled eggs because I feel like they smell like farts. But this is, I feel like this is what this is. It like makes a hard boiled egg, but like. Are you sure it hard boils it? I don't know, doesn't I it? I thought it just cooked it. Um, okay, so you just crack the egg on top and then funnel the top and then the eggs slide into the cooking cylinder. Eggs rise up in minutes. Does it just like pop up kind of like a toaster? Important, read before use, wash before use. So it must be coated in the inside of the cooking chamber with a nonstick spray every time you use it. I feel like it has to pop up, it's got an arrow. Okay, can we watch this and use it? Here, watch. Kevin is the dish doer of the family. <laughs> Apparently you can make an omelet, so we're gonna make an omelet in it. I thought it just made like a, an egg tube. It said it can make a hot dog egg, like you could just put a hot dog. On a, on a skewer and then stick it in with some egg and it'll coat your egg and or your hot dog with egg. It sounds gross, but it can do it. Can I pour it in? Oh, 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 the cooking spray. Okay, I'm gonna set it for six minutes. It's only been a minute, but it's like rising up and bubbling. Like it was like way down here and it just keeps rising. I just don't know how this top part can cook, but it said it would take two eggs. So I did two eggs. This is like a pool. Oh, I don't know what to do with it. That is so weird. I don't have the plate. Oh my God, what is, what is happening? Can you turn off the alarm? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I did not 
do well with the two eggs. That's for sure. Oh! Did you see the suction? Could you see where you are? Yeah, I got it on camera. Maybe we'll just let it cook again and cook the rest of the egg until it pops up again. Because like this is like, you don't want an egg that's soaked in raw egg, right? I mean, people eat raw eggs all the time, don't they? Like Rocky, didn't he eat a raw egg? I've never seen it. I've never seen an egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bubbly, but it is like cooked. It seems to be bubbling up though again, so I don't know. Oh, it's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the sound? I don't know if the mic's picking it up. Okay, that's more cooked. So how much, how much is it? $40. Honestly, it tastes like an omelet. That was entertaining. Like I thoroughly enjoyed that, but it was very concerning when this came up just like covered in liquid and like uncooked egg. But it tastes like an omelet. Like, I, like I'm, I'm sure you could add like salt, pepper and do flavors of whatever you wanted to do and it would taste good. It's just kind of comes back to the point of like, but why, in what circumstance would you need this? Like if you're camping, but it has a plug. You're at home, but you have a frying pan. So like, why would you ever use this? It seems like a pain to clean. So I feel like it's very funny. It does work like a winner if you see a use for it in your life, but I feel like for me, I don't. Before I bring up the next one, I wanna thank Helix for sponsoring this video. Sleep is so important to me, but picking the right mattress can be such an overwhelming process. How do you know if what feels good will actually give you a good night's sleep? I used to think that waking up in the morning with headache and back pain was completely normal. It wasn't until recently that I learned that it was a pillow and mattress problem, and that getting the perfect combination of both is crucial for the perfect night's sleep. Everybody's different. So Helix made a sleep quiz that matches your body type and preferences to a mattress that is perfect for you. <laughs> they asked me things like what mattress firmness we prefer, if we wake up in any pain, what position we typically sleep in, and then they make recommendations based on your answers. For instance, Kev sleeps on a slide all night and doesn't move. Meanwhile, I toss and turn all night until I drive him crazy. But we both love a medium soft mattress that hugs you like a cloud, but you don't get lost when you lay down. Based on our results, Helix recommended their Midnight Lux. They deliver to your door for free. They come in a box, but they're super easy to set up. And honestly, watching it puff up is way too satisfying. With buying online, I always worry. What if I don't like it? But Helix offers a 100 night free sleep trial so you get to test it out, see if it's a good fit, and if not, they will pick it up and give you a full refund. So far, I feel like Helix knows what I need more than I do, because I always go for the really soft ones, but I feel like this one offered a lot more support, but I will let you know in a couple of weeks how I'm feeling. You guys can visit the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash the icing artist for up to $200 off your mattress and two free pillows. Ready. Oh, is this a cake shaping thing? Okay, whenever you're making like numbers and letters and like shapes, having a separate pan for everything would be really absurd. This is apparently supposed to solve that problem, except like anything like this that you're making like a custom mold for cake. I feel like the concern is always, is the cake just gonna slip out the bottom or slip out the sides? What is it? So it's like, like you make a shape and then you pour the batter in it for a cake and it makes the shape of that. So it's like a shapeable cake pan. Yes, oh, really? that's so much better of a description than what I was doing. Where's the bottom? There is no bottom. So you'd have to like put it on a, on a baking sheet or something. So connect the flexible pieces together and then you place the mold onto a flat surface lined with parchment paper, like a baking sheet, and you create your desired shape. And then you just pour your batter in and, and release it out. Okay. Well, that's a heart. But I'd say you're pretty limited. Like it's not as big as I thought it was gonna be. So you're kind of limited in the size of cake you can make. But like, okay, so there's a heart, but what other shapes? Yeah, I think you can, okay, so you can make a square. You can make like a weird shape. But I feel like what shapes would you actually wanna make? And I would think like, to me, it's like the letters and the numbers. Like that's what people love, like especially numbers when it's like your kid's like first birthday or fifth birthday. Like when I worked at the bakery, people liked the numbers and this doesn't give you any numbers. I just don't think it's that versatile. So let's, I think let's make a heart because that's what's shown on the thing. And I feel like that would be like an odd cake pan that you wouldn't have. I've got a deep kind of pan because I'm worried that this cake batter is just gonna spill over the edges. And we tried to look it up while I was like making the cake batter. We tried to look it up and see 
Is there a bunch of other shapes that you can make? No, unless you like buy two packages of this, this is kind of all you can make. And even when you buy two packages, like you can only really make like the letter M. Well, there's different letters and numbers and stuff. They were just showing a few examples on the website. But still feels like limiting. Oh. It went misshapen. Look, when I tried to push it in, pushes it back out. I had this as more of a cute heart shape and I tried to push it in and just like the pressure from the cake batter is just pushing it right back out. So disappointing. And like, could you put something in here that would hold it? Maybe, but that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Which it's still kind of a heart shape, but like, it baked. I'm just like saddened by the shape of it. Like it just kind of looks like a blob now. It's not even a heart. Well, like I am surprised that like the batter didn't go squeezing out the bottom more or the sides. Like I'm definitely surprised that it held that part of it, but I feel like where the miss was, like them not providing you like little weights to hold it in place. So it just didn't push out of shape. And like, can we have like a side by side comparison of like what it, what it looked like? I'm just curious if like it's going to rip the cake apart at all. Like this is still a little warm, but it's been cooling for half an hour. I still see it's a bit warm. I feel like that's a lot hotter than I thought it would be. So I don't know if you let it cool a lot longer if it wouldn't have pulled apart. But to me, like it doesn't really matter because it doesn't look like a heart. That is not a heart. How much is it? Uh, $20. See, 20 bucks I feel like is a good price for something that can be so versatile. It's just missing that one little element to make it amazing. I, I guess it's a dud because it didn't really hold its shape unless you want to modify it yourself. I think this is the biggest, most expensive, like full size, like almost like small appliance gadget we have ever bought. And I'm really excited because it's so absurd. Like a toaster oven would do, I feel like, everything that this would do in more. Freezer to perfect in minutes. How many minutes? Because I was thinking it was gonna take a long time, but it says minutes. Watch this be like how we cook all of our pizzas from now on. Do you want to read the instructions? <laughs> <laughs> I hate instructions, I find them so boring. Just look at the buttons on the top. See, what that's what normally do when you yell at me. Lower, upper, dual. So the instructions say frozen pizza, Turn both the upper and lower elements on for 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, okay. It has bottom heat, top heat, and both heat. I've got a frozen pizza. We usually make our own from like, from scratch at home. What's the timer? Nine, or 15, 12 to 15 minutes. I mean, it's cool to sit here and watch it, but like, it'd be cooler if it did in like three minutes. Oh, I smell burning plastic. It's been 11 minutes. I feel like there hasn't been any changes. We've been just sitting here watching it spin around. Um. It looks less frozen, but like it's still definitely not like cooked. So I'm gonna put it on. It said 12 to 15, right? Try another three minutes. It's been cooking for 19 minutes and I put on for more time because the cheese hasn't melted, but I feel like if anything, it seems like it dehydrated it. I don't know, it just seems really kind of dry to me. It is cooked though, like it did cook it, but it didn't melt the cheese, which I feel like it's like, you want the cheese to be melty, not just like yeah, cool. toasted on top. Like it's very much like pizza. Like it's kind of like crusty in the middle. It's a little softer. It feels like it's warmed all the way through. Like it definitely like cooked it. The bottom of the crust has that like crunch that you would expect from pizza. How much is this? $113. See, for $113, that's so expensive. You would want like amazing pizza from it. And like, I don't know if you, if it was like not a frozen pizza, if it would have done a better job. And this is a dairy-free pizza, so maybe it's the dairy-free cheese, but the dairy-free cheese usually melts in the oven, so I yeah, can't imagine even, the size. Even the crust and everything, like everything else isn't, it's just, Warm. It's just warm, like it just warmed it. Better than what a microwave would do because it's definitely got that crispness, but like all the vegetables on top just feel like warmed onions and warm pepper. Like I can't imagine what it would do with like the other things. Like I said, it does like grilled cheeses and pies and chicken fingers and stuff. It says it does all these different things, but like the pizza part of it, which is the main thing because it's called a pizza plus, rotating pizza oven, then pizza is the selling point. And I feel like the selling point didn't sell me. Let's move on to the next one. I know what the next one is, and that's because I forgot about it. <laughs> that's that's my bad. That's my bad right there. <laughs> it's pizza scissors. I was supposed to cut the pizza with the pizza scissors. I was just too excited to see if it worked, and I forgot and didn't cut it. But I can, like, there's big wedges here that I can, like, recut and see if I can still cut it with the pizza scissors. <laughs> Have you ever cut pizza with scissors? 
Okay, either of I, and I thought this is the most ridiculous thing, and I mentioned it to someone yesterday, and they said, oh, that's super handy, because I end up cutting my pizza with scissors all the time. Which was mind-blowing to me, because I have never, like, that would have never been a consideration for me to ever, like, cut my pizza with scissors. Like, I, I have a pizza cutter, and I've used just a big knife and kind of, like, I guess, unlike regular scissors, it has a little wedge to hold your pizza. The other thing is, like, they're long, you can see like the length of them. <laughs> oh, and then I can just... As sad as it is of all the gadgets today, this one actually does what it says it does and works the best. <laughs> so I see the problem with this one because like if you had the whole pizza, it'd be hard to hold it up and you've got to do like lots of cuts. What's your thoughts? Cause you're pizza, I'm not a big pizza person. I'm a big pasta person. You're a pizza person. I'm super unimpressed. Don't cut your pizza with scissors. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But like, this can be really hard to cut your pizza with too. I'm not a big fan of those either. I just use a knife. Okay, so this is kind of hard to cut through. Which seems easier than what this does. I think of all pizza cutting methods, the knife worked the easiest. But if you use scissors normally, then maybe get the pizza scissors because it, it's longer and it cuts it easier. But for like $10, maybe, because I, I imagine normal scissors are about $10. So like how much are the pizza scissors? $21.79. You're just like super guts. He hates this gadget. Is this like the worst one we've ever reviewed to you? That's ridiculous. <laughs> We, we reviewed some pretty absurd gadgets so make sure to subscribe down below and like the video and comment and let me know if there is one of the things the gadgets that I didn't do right that you think I should have done differently and thank you so much to Helix for sponsoring this video you guys can click the link down below in the description box or go to helixsleep.com slash the icing artist to get up to $200 off a mattress and two free pillows I will see you guys later